Good. So I want to revisit what we, the first thing that we did last semester, the very first, I want to revisit the very first thing we did last semester. Uh, am I sharing the screen? Yes. We did the last semester. And the very, the very first thing we did last semester, right? And what's that? How physics is put together. It's put together. Or the building blocks of physics, the building blocks of physics. Okay, so at this point in time, you should remember, let's put together a table. One, two, three, right? Maybe that enough. So the first thing that you have to know about physics, right, is the basic quantities. That's something we invented to explain the universe huh? in physics. We start with three core ideas, okay? The basic quantities, the primary definition, and the laws of physics, okay? primary definitions and the loss of physics. Right now, here you go. At this point in time, hopefully you have already memorized what we did before, right? What we did before in, in mechanics. Mechanics, what are the basic definition of mechanics? The basic quantities of me. I, I'm not gonna do this way. I'm gonna do like that. You know, lengths. Mass and time. Those are, those definitions showed up for the first time in mechanics. In our course of mechanics. Okay, let's go here, page break, here you go. And then in thermodynamics, we also define something called amount of a substance. And that should be, you know, in thermodynamics or even chemistry, right? Dynamics. Um, good. So the unit of length in the SI system of unit is the meter. The unit of mass is the kilogram. The unit of time is the second. The unit for the amount of substance is the mole. That's the first time you First time I might have seen the mall was in the course of chemistry, okay? And then what else, what else do we have? Uh, amount of a substance, we are supposed to... And then we have this other idea that's very important in physics, and I'm going to introduce that to you, is the idea of electric charge. This, uh, this is a central idea in the course of electricity and magnetism, you know, ENM. So there are one, two, three, four, five, and then we're supposed to have two more, right? What are the other two? I wanna hear from you. Anybody there? Length, mass, time, amount of a substance. Anybody knows that it's supposed to be that 
we're supposed to have seven basic quantities. We have one, two, three, four, five. What are the other two here? When I hear from you, huh? let me give you a little bit. Oh, there's one more here that I forgot, right? So here you go. Before it was showed up, even before the amount of substance, temperature, and the unit of temperature is the Kelvin that showed up in thermodynamics too. And there is one final, okay, that's luminous intensity. We, we barely cover luminous, luminous intensity. The unit of luminous intensity is candela. Uh, that should be in optics. Okay. Those are the seven basic quantities in physics. And right now we are going to concentrate on this one, on the idea of electric charge. The primary definition for those who didn't, were not exposed that, right? What are the primary definitions? There are two only. Primary definition is the position. The vector position, okay? I'm going to emphasize that the vector position. And then we also have the vector force. The vector, the unit of the vector position is the meters. The unit of the vector force is the Newton. Those quantity here, they're all scalars. Scalar quantities, they are all scalar quantities. Seven, let's see, scalars. Okay, let's put this one. Quantities. Seven is scalar quantities. And then you have the laws of physics that we have steady, right? I'm gonna remember uh, three laws of motion. In reality, it's two, not three. Yeah, but let's keep it, let's keep it two, three for now. We have the law of gravity. We didn't cover that last semester. The law, one law of gravity. And then we didn't have time to cover that. I usually cover that, you know, law, the gravitational law, but we didn't have time to cover that. And we have four laws of thermodynamics. I'm gonna abbreviate by thermal, so you don't have too much space here. Thermodynamics, okay? So you save space here in my table. Space is at a premium here in this table. Four laws of thermodynamics. And we also have uh, four laws of ENM. Electricity and magnetism. Electricity of magnetism. Okay. We, and I'm going to, but before I introduce the first law of electricity and magnetism, we have to cover this new quantity here. We have to talk a little bit more about this new quantity here, which is the electric charge. Okay. Let us talk about the electric charge. Let us talk about the electric charge and what it is and what it is, okay? This is a very, this is a very abstract concept, abstract concept that should not be confused, should not be confused with mass, with the idea of mass, with the idea of mass. Mass is different. The concept of mass is different from the concept of charge. The idea of mass is different from the idea of charge. Okay? From the idea of charge, the idea of mass. Mass is different from the idea of charge. Okay, 
What do we know about charge? What do we know about this, about the charge? Okay. We do know that there are, let's say, strictly speaking, we can say that there are three types of charge. Okay. The first one that was discovered was the negative charge. The second one that was discovered was the positive charge. And finally, you know, the last one that was discovered, which was more difficult to discover, was the neutral charge. Okay. Each. So we developed those ideas of negative, positive, and neutral charges. Okay, by, and we did that just by observing nature. Okay, how did we come up with this idea of negative, positive, and neutral charges? Okay, let me see if I can give an example here. Just by performing experiments, right? Let's see here. Oh yeah, here you go. You know, it has been known for a long time, even since antiquity, that if you rub a rod, ebonite rod, or a rod against an animal fur, okay, we would observe. Oh, oh, I did something wrong here. Here you go. We would observe either an attraction or a repulsion. This thing has been known for. Since antiquity, the ancient Greeks knew about that. That's what we call the electric force or the electrostatic force, okay? Um, let's take a look. Uh, uh, electric force in Wikipedia. Wikipedia usually have very good articles about that electrostatic. Let's see, electrical force. Uh, let's see here, let's, electrical force Wikipedia. No, that's not good. We should go back to the other one. Electrostatic, Wikipedia. Since, since classical times, okay? since antiquity, that's what it means by classical times. We're talking about uh, from the 8th century BC to 5th century AD. Since classical times, it has been known that some materials, such as amber, okay, that's, that's amber, this, this yellowish, this yellowish substance is amber. It can be used as a glue, okay? Attracted lightweight particles after rubbing. It has been known for a long time, okay? So here you go. That's the triboelectric effect. A type of contact electrification in which certain materials become electrically charged after they're separated from different materials, okay? So you go ahead and you'd rub, you'd rub amber I guess something else. You'd electrically charge amber, and you and the amber would attract lightweight particles. The Greek word for that, for the amber, was I know. Have you heard of this this word before? Electron. That's how it's written in Greek. Right? Here's the eta, eta sign, uh, eta letter, lambda, epsilon, kappa, tau, rho. Omicron and mu, okay? So that, that, that's the type of uh, experiment that I used to do when I was a little kid. You know, I would go to, to school. Hopefully I can do that now, okay? I would pick up my pen, would rub it against my, my hair, would, pick up, uh, would uh, get small pieces of paper and the, and the the head of the pen would attract the small pieces of paper. So that's the type of thing that uh, people knew for a long time, since the ancient Greece, okay? Coulomb's law, let's see if they have a history here. I always like to, because history, they don't have it. Uh, what a shame. History of electrostatic. Seems that way is, is history of electrostatic. History of electric force, history of electricity. Wikipedia, right? 
it's raining out there, okay? So there's a very good chance that my electricity is gonna go away. Uh, electricity, let's see if they have the history here. History of electricity, uh, history, okay? Long before any knowledge of electricity existed, you know, people were aware of shocks from electric fish, okay? Ancient Egyptians texts dating back 2750 BCE referred to this fish as a thunder of the Nile. They didn't know exactly what it was electricity, but they knew about the electric fishes that would uh, have this type of effect in human beings and the other creatures around it. Described them as protectors of all other fishes. That's what they the ancient Egyptian described it. Electric fish were again reported by Linea after by ancient Greek, Roman, Arabic, naturalists, and physicians. Several ancient writers, such as Pliny of the Elder and Fibonius Largus, attested to the numbing effect of electric shocks delivered by electric catfish and electric rays as well. And knew that such shocks could travel along conducting objects. Okay? So it just, it's just not just the during the classical period, but it was much long ago, okay? It just happened that it was during the classical period that they start to make sense of what uh, that phenomenon was all about, okay? Thales of Miletus made a series of observations on static electricity around 600 BCE. See that ancient cultures around the Mediterranean knew of that certain object, such a rod and of rubber could be rubbed with cat fur to attract light objects, light feathers. So that's when the experimentation really, really took place, you know, like around 600 BCE. So they would get the rods of amber of that yellow material that you saw, okay, which can be used as a glue and some animals get trapped inside it. See, it's a fossilized tree resin. Umber is a fossilized tree resin that has been appreciated for its color and natural beauty since Neolithic times. Much value for antiquity. We still have umber today. We commercialize those things. You can buy those things there. Much value for antiquity to, to the present as a gemstone. Umber is made into a variety of decorative objects. Umber is used in jewelry and has been used as a healing agent in folk medicine. If you watch that first movie of the Jurassic Park, they mention about umber, right? They could extract the DNA of the dinosaurs inside the umber. It was actually an insect that had the, extracted the, the blood of the dinosaur and became trapped in umber, just like this ant is trapped here in amber. So they, those ancient people, the ancient Greeks, they would experiment with umber. They would rub it against cat fur, just like I rubbed my plastic pen in my head, okay? And would observe that light objects would be attracted to it. That's when electricity is, the idea of electricity start to develop. Later on, later on, you know, we came up with the idea that in order to explain those phenomenon of the static electricity, we had to postulate the existence of something that we call the electric charge, okay? So here you go. The idea of electricity has been around since, you know, 2600 BC, right? But it was, during ancient Greece, that it started to be studied in a more formal fashion. Okay. Ancient Greeks discovered that uh, if they rub, you know, rods, a rod made of umber, okay? Which is, it's, it's Greek name, it's Greek name gave rise 
to the word electricity electricity okay if they rub, rub uh, amber a piece of amber uh, rod made of amber against cat fur okay here you go that goes for the cat lovers right you get your little cat get your piece of amber rub it against his fur right and then approach that piece of amber to small pieces it can be paper no and you're going to notice it and approach the rabbit, the, the amber to small pieces. How, how do they write, write it down? Huh? Light objects, oh, not, not, not small, small pieces, but light objects, light feather, right? Here you go. Uh, not the small pieces, not necessarily small pieces, but uh, to light objects. Like feather, they would be attracted or repelled, depending how you perform the experiment. Okay, repelled, repelled. Here you go. Let's take a look at uh, YouTube. YouTube may have some nice videos there. Electrical, uh, static electricity. Right? Is static. Electricity, static electricity experiments. Measure, uh, let's see here, awesome science experiment. Let's see if I can get to a good one. Amber rod, electric, electrified amber rod. Let's see, electric, electrified uh, amber rod. Uh, electric, electrified, electric experiment, let's see. Tutorial on electrostatic from amber to ebonite. Let's see if they have a, must be, okay. Yeah, here you go, static electricity with amber. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Do you love gear charts? Yeah, you skip it, skip it. it. Here you go, see that? Amber gave the name to electricity. We pronounce that electron. Let's see if we can do that. Uh, you are rubbing, this guy is rubbing amber against this white material, the silk. Okay. And now he has those small pieces of paper right in here. The Greeks wouldn't use paper, right? They would use feathers. That was much lighter. That's what I used to use when I was a little kid. I would rub my plastic pen to my head and would approach the pen the to those small pieces of uh, paper. Oh, see that? That's exactly what I would observe. Imagine the ancients seeing this type of phenomenon. They would start thinking, what is that black magic? You know, think about the first, the first human being who was exposed to this type of experiment. Okay. And they start thinking, you know, how, how does it happen? Why does it happen? Which type of model can I construct to explain this type of phenomenon, right? See, it's attracting all those small pieces of paper. And that's the a piece of amber. Something like that has been known for thousands of years, right? Let's see if we have another, another not neat experiment. Let's see, what about this one here? Rubber and glass rod with tinsel and balloon. Maybe this one is a good one too. MIT Department of Physics, rubber and glass rods. Okay, so here you go. Here you go, here's my, my plastic, is that rubber and glass? Okay, this must be a glass rod. Those are very light materials. Here's my balloon, helium balloon, right? Let's see what it's gonna do. It works not just for amber, but it works for other materials as well. What you saw before. Helium fillet conducting balloon. This balloon is made of aluminum sheets, right? 
and you should have alumino she's there too let's see plex l oh, plexiglass rod is a plastic rod okay it's not a glass rod it's a oh let's see here let's take a look again rabbit fur rubber rod okay helium filled conducting balloon plexiglass rod rubber rod rabbit fur just like your cat fur now let's go a little bit back again here you go okay this one is hanging tin cell right so think what this guy is going to do most likely he's going to do what he's going to wrap or rub those two rods in the fur right to electrically charge Here you go. And note, see that this material here is suspended by plastic. There's a reason why it's, it's suspended with plastic. You're going to rubber it, rub it. So let it be charged. Oh, yeah, see that? Look what happens. It repels. And the pieces of tinsel also get repelled among themselves. And now what about these other rods? It attracts those wires and look what happened. He touches this material and this material just go back to its initial position. Oh, here you go. Repel. Repel. And what about now? That's the type of experiment that the people do. It's too repelling, right? There's a. We can explain that by the what you see here. You can we can explain using the concept, the idea of electric charge. But that's that's how you okay. So here you go. He touches the balloon. He's touching the balloon. Why is he touching the balloon? There's a reason why he's touching the balloon. He's doing that several times. Oh, see, the balloon is being repelled. And I went to explain how that thing happens. Okay. So how can we explain this type of phenomenon that we that we experiment? That we experiment experience in real life. Okay. We can explain that in terms of negative, positive, and neutral charges. Okay. So what we discover, what uh, what we discovered, is that is the following. One, it is possible. Uh, one, here you go. Most objects are neutrally charged in other, in other ways, in, in other words, they do not have any electric charge whatsoever, okay? Two, and two, we can electrically charge different objects One way to charge an, an, an object is one, one possible way is by rubbing it against another one. Another one. Oh, what else did you discover? Once an object is electrically charged, comma, we observe a non-contact force, just like the force of gravity, that can be either attractive or repulsive, okay? This type of force, this type of force we call an electrical force. 
Okay, and I'm going to keep a record of those two videos. Okay, here you go. We got this one here. So you can refer, see, see the videos, the following videos. Okay, that's uh, and the other one. I like the one with the amber because of its historical value. Here you go. See the following video. Right? Now going back to our notes, right here. Not this one. This one here, yeah. So there are three types of charge, okay? Most objects are neutrally charged. They do not have any electric charge whatsoever. Once, all, uh, once an object is electrically charged, serve a non-contact force. that can be either attractive or repulsive. This type of force we call an electrical force. Neutrally, Neutral, neutrally charged objects, neutral, neutrally charged objects have zero charge and they do not experience any electric force whatsoever. Okay, that's what you have to know. So here you go, here's my drawing. Here you go, we have a positive charge. We have a negative charge, and then we have this neutral charge. I'm going to put it in proper order of discovery. Here you go. The negative charge was, was the first one to be discovered. And uh, what uh, incorporates this idea of the negative charge is the electron. The electron has negative charge. The positive charge was the second one was discovered, the basic positive charge is called the proton, electron, proton. And then later on, we, we discover the a neutral electric charge, which is incorporated by the, the, the particle called the neutron, okay? That's what the, Historically, you know, the, ne the negative charge was discovered before the positive, the electron was discovered before the, pro the proton, which was discovered before the neutron. It, and that happens around the turn of the 19th century, okay? Now, what else do we know? We know that negative and positive charges attract each other, okay? And this is a non-contact force. So, and uh, that's where we go, that we start talking about the Coulomb's law. Let me, here you go, right here. So we start, we start with the basic idea or quantity, right? Of quantity called the electric charge. And we discover that electric charges exert force upon each other. This force is called the Coulomb force, Coulomb or electric force. This is a non-contact force, this is a non-contact force. Okay, it doesn't require any contact between objects to, to perceive this type of force. This is a non-contact force. And, and, and it gives rise, gives rise to our first law of electricity and magnetism, the so-called magnetism. Uh, the Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law. The Coulomb's law can be written in a in a formula. Q 
Okay, I want you to memorize that, to remember that. Here you go. I'm going to insert a formula here. Equation. Oops. Here you go. The electric force, you know, the intensity of the electric force is given, is directly proportional to the electric charge, the more charge you have. If you have two charges, right? One charge is Q1, the other is Q2. And inversely proportional to the distance between those two charges. Here we have a proportionality constant. Here, go. Here we have a proportionality constant that's represented by the letter K. Q1 is how much charge you have in an object. Q2 is how much charge you have in another object. Char charges are measured in terms of the unit of Coulomb. Q1 and Q2 are measured in Coulombs, in units of Coulombs. Okay. So he go. Units of Coulomb. What about K? What about the, what about K? Okay. K has a name, 1156, we're almost done. Hang in there, let's see, K. Let's go here, your book must talk about K. Okay, so here we go. Uh -uh. Let's see, charges, objects. Here you go, here's the force, the equation for the force, and this proportionality constant is equal to this value here in SI units. 8.99 tends to the nine Newton meter square per Coulomb square. Okay, so it's approximately nine. What about K? No. K is equal to, Eight point nine nine uh, equation cross ten to the nine, right? Ten to the nine Newton meter square per Coulomb square. Newton per Newton meter square. Okay, Newton meter square per Coulomb square. Okay, that's how, that's what it should be known. Electrostatic, it's called the electrostatic constant. Okay, this is called the electrostatic constant. What else you have to know? You have, now you know how the force can be calculated. And what else do you have to know? Oh, what else I have to know is, you know, charges of different signs attract each other, each other. Charges of same sign, of same sign repel one another. That's what you have to know. Just for your information, okay, uh, just for you to have a, an idea, the elect the charge of the electron is given by you don't have to memorize it, but you have to know more or less what's the order of magnitude. It is in your book. It is in any books that are going to find out there. We have this value right here. People have been able to measure that in the laboratory. 
the charge of the electron is electron is a negative charge consequently it must have the charge of the electron and then uh, we represent that by the letter e is given by you go, going back there to the book 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 coulombs 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 here coulombs and by the way is a negative the charge of the proton, which is a positive charge, also referred by the letter P, is given by, here you go, I'm going to emphasize that this charge is positive, but it has the same value as the charge of the electron, okay? So it's 12 noon right now. Do you have any questions? Any questions about that? Okay, we're gonna have office hours right now. I'm going to stop my recording here. And if you don't stay, I will see you Wednesday, right? Thank you for being here and I'll see you Wednesday. Bye-bye.